Yeah. Another big factor, as we were saying, the EDCs, the endocrine disrupting chemicals. Yes. Uh-huh. Right now, the latest study showed that they looked at microplastic in, in every testicular <laughs> cell that they looked. <laughs> um, other EDCs like phthalates that are Fine. yeah, yeah, Powerful. phthalates from plastic. Mm. Those are anti-testosterone um, uh, type hormones. Not only causes erectile dysfunction problems, um, developmental issues also, yeah. decreasing sperm count, which is another thing we need to talk about. Yeah. You, you think of th- things like BPA, all the atrazine. So all the EDCs, the PFAS, that's in 97% of the blood of Americans. And they appear to be disrupted at the receptor level too. So you, you, can, you can take testosterone, but it's not going to have an impact mm-hmm. because you just, because your receptors are being yeah. screwed up by plastic. By, yeah. by plastic yeah. and EDCs, yeah. 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 So, so we are modifying the receptor. Yeah. That's yeah. the scary part. Uh, another uh, thing uh, I yeah. found also, like talking about hemochromatosis, say, yes. so then I, in our clinic, we've developed almost a niche practice of looking for high iron. Mm. Iron is one of those metals that really, it, it, it's an essential metal, but it's also very toxic at higher doses. And there's a lot of people, because the, we supplement our food with iron, that we find elevated L levels of iron or genetic hemochromatosis mm. and high iron is directly toxic to the penile tissue so one of the causes of ed is second is hemochromatosis yeah. so we've been checking yeah. for this so again in our clinic we're very very aware of this because really when a guy calls us usually for symptoms of low t one of the main symptoms of low testosterone that we see is the low libido or decreased strength of erection or decreased morning wound. So that's something we're very sensitive yeah. and we go after it. Yeah. So we try to see out of all those causes that we have, can we identify some? Can we correct them to try to really help uh, diminish the impact on sexual health? Mm-hmm. But a lot of times we may not know why the person has ED or EI. So I think we've talked enough about identifiers. Well, no, let me just reasons. mention two more that I think Sorry. are very important. Um, most men, because there's, I don't want to say names, but now these ED hair loss telemedicine clinics are everywhere yeah. and they're pumping these hair loss medications. And we need to talk about the post finasteride syndrome, which reduces Very your ability real. to be fertile and reduces, uh, ejaculation periods, even causing inorgasmia for some people, meaning they can't ejaculate, um, What's it called? Infertility, poor libido, and lack of erections, right? And what's scarier with finasteride? Irreversible ED. Yep. It's in the literature. Irreversible ED. And so why, why, these would you, why would you take something for your hair? Russian roulette with your dick. <laughs> Russian roulette with we, your dick. We like to call it the pretty, uh, the pretty boy syndrome. Yeah. Looks pretty on the top, but there's no function down there. Well, if that's, if that's a numerator, I, I, I am, by the way, I think this, this is a profound problem. And we've had, I mean, we've, at Front Tech, we've had Two men who contacted me saying they, they, you know, they can't get up and they confirmed that. They stopped to stop finasteride. They confirmed right. it with, with, the, with the tech ring. But uh, has someone here who's been taking finasteride since it came out in the 90s? It, it is a numerator denominator problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, you, uh, you could argue, what I, and I got a phone. No, 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 you know, but I, I, it's, and I hope, I hope, by the way, I hope it do look pretty. The, um, <laughs> yeah. I, you do. I like to handsome, do. but uh, you, look, <laughs> you look phenomenal, Doc. <laughs> but I, but I, I, you know, I, I was certainly when I started taking, I was unaware of the problem. I would not have taken if I, if I were aware of it, but I am aware that it's a numerator. You know, there's, and people need to be informed of these risks. You, you can go online. You can, you can see what, what the numerator is. I can't quote, quote, quote. All. And that's the biggest thing. When, when Doc asks him, I'm like, did you, did they tell you what the side effects are? 99% yeah. of people will Never. say no. And, and Dr. Elliot, that's a good point. Yeah. Not everybody who takes finasteride has those side effects. Yeah, and correct. you'll hear that all the time, that they're like, I've been on it 10 years, nothing has happened yeah. to me. So the percentage may not be that high, and it's cumulative. Mm-hmm. It's described about 1% or 2% of people may have those side effects, mm-hmm. but it's cumulative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if it happens to you, it doesn't matter that exactly. it didn't happen to anybody exactly. else. Correct. And we've seen it so many times. And we, so. Don't, we don't know what the right dosage is, because you know, we, we were complaining earlier about doctors, is we treat everyone... As if, if they're one size fits all, everyone mm-hmm. gets the same dose of medication, regardless of their their weight, their BMI, their, their gender. Um, I my reaction when I, when I learned about this, not finasteride, which wasn't until I started working with this company. I mean, I knew it was a risk, but I wasn't aware yeah. of the extent of the risk. Uh, I, I take it every two or three days now. I don't take it every, every day. Mm. Right. Not, am I helping myself with that? I protect myself. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. And pharma should be able to tell me that. And they yeah, well, no, we have other solutions for it. It's not a DHC problem, but an inflammatory uh, and poor blood flow issue. So. Th- Aside from that, let's finish two uh, two pointers, but I'm going to make it into one. Uh, the epidemic with obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. Three out of four Americans are over- overweight or obese. One in two Americans have diabetes, insulin resistance, yeah. or prediabetes, and one in three Americans have cardiovascular disease. 
I will link most of it, aside from the shitty diets, uh, pro-inflammatory processed uh, vegetable oils. That's a huge thing because we have these little cards where with Dr. Everyone's name saying, hey, um, I'm allergic to all these oils. These are the ones that I'm good. And literally every restaurant I go to, very few even have any plates to offer you that don't have these artificial processed, highly inflammatory oils. Uh, uh, agreed, but we're not just going to limit uh, the inflammatory oils. It is processed foods in yes. general. Yeah. Yeah. And then, no, no, like I said, like the number one cause of all this, it's metabolic dysfunction. Yeah. And that is brought in by our poor nutrition. It's yeah. pre-diabetes, insulin resistance. So Processed that is foods. the big one. And that's why it's linked cardiovascular to sexual wellness. Yeah. So that is the big, big, big one that we're seeing. Before we finish, another cause, guys, that we have to talk about, it's um, venous leakage. Yeah. So although, yes, endothelial dysfunction is a really big cause of ED, if you look at the, the statistics, they're even quoting in some urological studies that up to 75% of ED is because of venous leakage. Mm -hmm. Because if I can go back into the, 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 the physics of an erection, right? Uh, men were very simple. For a woman to be excited, there has to be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. There has to be that, that you're nice to them. There has to be emotions. There has to be the right setting yeah. for, for chemistry. all, everything. Chemistry. Men were not that difficult. Yeah. All we need, <laughs> blood comes into the artery, the liver goes up, the veins close down, maintain the blood there, you maintain an erection. Right. So that's the physiology. So you need both things. You need blood to come in through the arteries, then you need the, the veins to constrict and maintain the blood. Mm. So when you talk to a lot of guys, they'll tell you, and especially when we have our guys that put them on testosterone, we put them on Cialis, we put them on nitric oxide, they'll tell you, I can get tumor sense. I feel like blood is rushing in. The, the dick feels heavy. Mm. It's starting to get, but if I move, if she goes on top, mm. if I stand up, it doesn't stay hard. Yeah. This is where the reflux of veins and the venous leakage can happen. And again, your device can help with all this. Look out the solution. So, you know, I, they're ED to, I kind of break down ED into two different groups. There are men who can't attain an erection and the men who can't sustain an erection. And one of the things that's, that's terrible about the, the, the research conducted by urologists is they group those two together. <laughs> and, they, they and, they, and, and they're two, they're two different groups. Yeah. So it's two different ideologies. But I, I think that I think that everyone gets. I think the Venus leak is a, is, is a problem for women women as well. I don't. So I, I you know, uh, you know, when I was fourteen years old, I could I could uh, hold a girl's hand and get a hard on for two or three hours. The point where point where it hurt. Um, doesn't happen. That doesn't happen to me. Black balls. Hey, uh, black balls. Blue, blue, blue. Sorry, black balls. His, his are black. That's black, how. That's how black. bad yours his was. <laughs> Damn, yours <laughs> are really bad. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's when they fall off. It's the, it's, it's, <laughs> Gang green <laughs> balls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, uh, but the and that and once the one thing then there's going to be a paper published about this independent paper. But we, we've started this um, issue internally because I was I became well, I thought how can how can we see the um, the benefit of a ring versus a PD5 medication. Uh, well, so I thought we, we have to look at, at D2 mesins. So D2 mesins is the time it takes for an erection to go down after climax. So we we, uh, we test this on uh, 11 men in Montana, and this other study is going to be independent. Actually, it's going to be conducted here in, my, here in Miami. Uh, and with so with nothing, we had, we had a group of men aged 27 to 70 at that time. I was, I was the oldest man in the group. An erection went away in 25 to 30 seconds. Uh, 10 milligrams of dalafil, the erection lasts a little over two minutes. Uh, the maximum performance ring, which is our, which is our, just our product without the technology, the erection lasts over four minutes. And the two together, the erection lasts over five minutes. Mm -hmm. Well, that changed my behavior. Uh, because the message really to men is, if you, if you have difficult sustaining erection, and that can be multifactorial, men are more complicated than you're representing them. <laughs> but men, it, when it's it, working, it, it's right, right. When it's working, right. Exactly. But with men, there are issues of boredom in a long-term relationship, distraction, and then the medications, diseases, you know, it's alcohol, drugs, et, et cetera. But if you, if you can get an erection, how, you talking about trying to keep it. So the two together kept to that 10th thousand plus the maximum performance ring was, was over five minutes. I hit over, I hit seven minutes at one time. Now that's, that's a game changer for, for, for people in a relationship. It's profoundly confidence building. And we've heard this from, Many of our customers, is one of the reasons why I want to study this, I, I, want, I want to c communicate to men that if you want to have, if you want to last longer, be more satisfying for your partner, and more satisfying yourself, put a ring on. You don't have to worry about, are you Beyonce? <laughs> <laughs> put a ring on it, baby. Put a ring In on it. In the other place. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and it's, uh, you know, 
I, I, I know I showed this to you, but my, we have a, a group of um, older, there's six older men who communicate with me regularly. We, we got as testers. There are men in the six and sevens. The men, unlike me, have significant disease. They got prostate disease. They got, they got diabetes. The ring for, for all these people is, is a game changer. They make love longer. Their partners are more confident. Uh, there's no longer the sort of, hey, we're both hard rushed orgasm or mm. the worry that you're going to lose it. It, yeah. you, know, you know, you know, goes away. And I was just going to touch on that. So, you know, one of the th one of the main things when Miguel came to us with this tech, one of the thing, the first thing that that popped into my head, and you know, we've described the mechanics of ED, but I also want to get into the psychology of mm. ED, which is which is even harder to deal with, right? So, you know, we've treated thousands of men over the years with ED, and one of the biggest factors is their psychology, right? So, because all it takes, and whoever's listening to this, all it takes is one bad event, one bad event no, where, where, right. where, where yeah. you didn't perform well, and now all of a sudden it can spiral out of control within you, and now you have extreme performance anxiety, right? And so now you go berserk. With, you know, grabbing the Viagras and the Cialis and all this stuff. So, you know, for anybody listening, I would tell you that the, the biggest value of, of the tech ring is that, hey, you know, now that it's in your head, well, let's let's give you some data to Object. prove to you that yes. that you don't have a mechanical issue. Right. Because if you're getting four to five good erections at night, then, you know, this is a performance issue. And now your behavior can change where now you have an objective measurement to say, okay, it's in my head. I need to change this. I need to like really reapproach this. There's nothing wrong with me. Cause the, the problem with guys is then we internalize and we say, we're broken. I need to this bill to fix it. I think that's one of the reasons why men watch so much porn. No. You know, they, because there's no confidence issue with pornography because you know, there's no relationship. Right. Right, right, sure. Yeah.